Hey, this is Prospector Jess. I've got something for you today. I had a request. We asked some questions about what was the most pressing question you had regarding desert prospecting. And the following question came up, and it's a good one. So for desert prospecting, can vegetation be a clue to gold mineralization? Let's take a look. What we want to look at is how gold-related minerals will impact plants and how you can see what those results will be so you can predict where gold might be located in the desert. Specifically in arid desert climates, there are minerals and the climate and those interact cause the plants grow in a particular way. It's about plant survival, survival of the fittest. So what we're looking at here is the kind of thing that stunts plant growth or makes plants grow a certain way or makes only certain kinds of plants survive or some don't survive at all. All of those are indicators that you can look at and think about as you look for gold. Fun fact, some plants will actually concentrate gold in their leaves. Did you know that? You can use it to find gold under some conditions. It's being studied right now in Australia to see whether or not it can actually be a predictor that they can use to help locate gold locations over a broader area. Pretty cool. The adaptation of a plant species to arid desert climates is an important thing to look at. Specifically, what we're looking for are the kinds of plants that grow and how they grow, what they're willing to tolerate more than what they're willing to take in. In other words, we're looking at the effects of toxicity versus nutrient value of the material around the plant. And that'll be an indicator of gold, and you'll see why in a second. So gold and related minerals of interest that we're gonna be looking into are sulfides, specifically pyrites, copper, and iron. And then that basically decays into a form of sulfuric acid, which has a property when it comes to plants as well. Copper, zinc, silver, chromium, nickel, cadmium, vanadium, manganese, etc. All these play a role, a special role, because these kinds of metals typically have a very big impact on plants and plant life specifically a thing called heavy metals. And I put this approximation because heavy metals are kind of a point of debate between different people as to exactly what a heavy metal is. But the reality is what we're concerned about here is metals that have an impact on plants or gold, one or the other. So for example, mercury, bismuth, lead, okay? Copper, nickel, chromium, zinc, uh, silver, and of course our friend gold. Cobalt, manganese, vanadium, and iron. All of these things are familiar to us in alloys and other forms, but did you know that they're in the soils around us, even in minute concentrations? And in some cases, they play a big role in the health of a plant. Other minerals, or other elements rather, that play a role are the light metals. Uh, lithium, beryllium, boron, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, potassium, and calcium. Halides and other salts. These are chlorides and bromides and iodides, etc. These are heat concentrated evaporites of chlorine and bromine. And also include other light metals like calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. One of them is a form called limestone or calcite, or you might have seen it in a form called caliche. I'll bring that up in a minute. Magnesium. Magnesium comes from the decay of ultramafic residue specifically serpentine rocks. And that magnesium uh, imbalance with calcium can cause a problem. I'll get to that in a second. Iron, in the form of black hematite or red oxides, but it plays a role in plant health as well. A lot of these things are due to volcanic deposits, which may have secondary hydrothermal deposits embedded inside of them that contain gold or gold-bearing minerals or some of these metals we've talked about. And of course, gold. This all ties together with gold. So plant life and minerals. What are the key issues we want to consider? Well, toxicity, specifically heavy metals. Heavy metals basically have a property in that in any concentration, they can cause problems with plant growth, or rather they can kill plants. For example, copper, in a very small amount, can kill plants dead or in a doornail. Ask me how I know? Well, I had an accident once with a tree, and that'll be enough said. Salts, okay? Any of the salts of the halides can cause problems, particularly chlorides, because plants don't like chlorides. It builds up and causes problems with their plant uh, 
internal workings and so that basically can cause trouble and kill the plant, especially the chlorides. Magnesium, an imbalance of magnesium and calcium, it'll displace the calcium in the plant and that in turn causes the plant to stunt its growth. So you wanna basically be low on magnesium and high on calcium, not the other way around. If it is high in calcium, that's a sign of a territory that's high potential for gold. The problem is, it also means that certain kinds of plants won't grow and other kinds of plants will. And I'll get into that in a second as well. Concentrated metals. Any metal that concentrates too much is a problem for plants in general. Too much iron even can be a problem. Arid, lacking water, that tends to cause other things to concentrate such as the ionic stuff in the salts. That can be a problem. Sulfides in excess, that's that uh, pyrite residue or the hydrosulf <clears throat> pickup. That's the pyrites or the sulfuric acid results. CO2 in excess, that's basically a condition known as anoxic. And what it means is that it'll build up other dead uh, materials such as methane, uh, hydrogen sulfide gas, etc. And that in turn causes plant death. So acid, less than 6.0 or alkaline, greater than 8.0 pH. These are soils or water that have that kind of acid concentration. Either one of those will be a problem for most plants. In the desert, you typically see more alkaline soils, that is pHs above eight. And so you wanna basically be ready for the kind of plant life that grows in that kind of pH. Nutrients. Uh, nitrates are necessary for all plant growth. Phosphates are necessary for all plant growth. Calcite, to some degree, or calcium, is necessary for plant growth. Iron, water, you need to be neutral, plus or minus one pH, around seven, so that's neutral pH, which is typical of fresh water. You wanna have a, have a typically uh, atmospheric level concentration of CO2, not higher, such as in some volcanic areas or in some areas where it's anoxic, it's capped off for some reason, that will kill plant life. You want to O2 levels that are similar, uh, not too high, not too low. Trace metals, uh, a lot of trace metals are good for plants uh, in very, very small, uh, we're, you know, we're talking parts per billion, parts per million kind of levels. Uh, they're necessary a lot of times in the plant process of, of transpiration, etc. But they basically are used as part of the chemical reactions that go on inside the plant and not much more. And if you get them building up, the plant dies. Sulfur, same situation. A little bit of sulfur goes a long way to make plants grow healthy and green. But if you get it too high, they die out. So you might look for cases where you see plants dying off because that might be an indicator of some pyrites and sulfides decaying in the region. See how that works? So what you're gonna be looking for? You're gonna be looking for rapid changes in plant density and quality. That's an area that moves from seeing some brush, moving to no brush, and maybe even just you know flat sand. There's nothing around, maybe a little dimple or some, or some uh, kind of metallized uh, material uh, flowing out of the side of a hill, you know, some kind of a deposit. That would tell you the plants don't grow there and it's probably high in metals. Hmm. Lower density usually means increased metals or excess salts. So basically you're looking at lower density of plants. They're dying off. That means there's more metals, more salts. Therefore, there's more possibility that there might be a gold deposit nearby. The types of plants, leafy versus stunted and weed-like. Leafy plants do not like any kind of metals. So you want to be looking for that kind of situation where you're seeing some stunted growth. Even in an area that has lots of leafy vegetation that may not be in the desert, you may look for this kind of growth because it's an indicator that there could be a metal deposit or a load nearby. Places that have calcium concentration layers, these are fun. It stunts the deeper rooting of plants because it forms a concrete. A false bedrock trap for gold. Uh, we call this caliche, and it basically is a very good sign. And you want to look just above the caliche layer, just below the layer of riverbed that might have overlain that over the centuries. And that area right in there would act as a gold trap and concentrator. It's going to be hard to break out, though. You're going to need some jackhammers. Unfortunately, increased salts make for hot rocks and detecting problems due to their signal-to-noise drop. 
So basically you're, you're seeing more and more noise from the reflections from all of that conductive rock material that has all those salts on it. And then the moisture with the salt combines and forms a little eddy current loop that looks an awful lot like metal. A good discriminating detector will be able to tell that apart. The problem is a good discriminating detector is a little more expensive. We'll get into that later when we talk about detectors. But that's kind of the thing you're looking for in the desert. Those salts are just part and parcel of what a desert is. So where do you look? Alluvial fans. This is where the washes flow out of the mountains and onto the desert floor and they spread out in this wide V-shaped fan as they go downhill and the slope decreases rapidly. As that slope rapidly decreases, it drops large nuggets first, smaller material, and then dust at the end. And that's kind of the order in which things go. At the end where the dust goes, beyond that goes your evaporites and salts. They're going to continue on down into those little pools. You're not necessarily likely to find much gold that far down, but you might. If you do, it's going to be flood gold mainly. So just keep that in mind when you're looking in those areas. That's what you're going to be trying to set your gear up for. Uh, you're looking at deader plant zones, as we talked about earlier, where they're dying off. So especially if there's low mineral deposits nearby with sulfur and copper, that's going to kill off any plants right near the load itself. That's an important clue. Obvious concentrated or concreted clay and gravel layers, the structures, so that's that caliche stuff. Layered soil structures obstructing the depth of the roots. Again, the plants get stunted off because they can't make it through that layer. It's too hard. And so they kind of grow in weird ways. Uh, some plants or trees can go through that. Cottonwoods would be one of them. But if they do, you might look at areas where they've broken through that material and break some of it apart yourself and see if you can't find some gold within that layer. Like I said, just above the caliche layer. Arid and calcareous. So we're looking for things that form these limestone uh, salts that have evaporated and, and formed concreted materials. Dolomitic calcium magnesium soils. Caliche deposits, these are concrete-like lime minerals. Iron red clays are an important clue. Uh, typically because a lot of the materials in the desert come from the, the deposit of old eroded mafic minerals. So these are either lava flows that have gone through uh, volcanic action or serpentine soils that have been eroded and, and decayed over time and turned bright red uh, because of the way the iron oxidizes. And that's an important uh, thing. The redder the better. If you find deep red clays, those are good sign that you're going to find gold nearby. Possibly more saline tolerant plant life. Bigger nuggets will usually drop out of a flood wash earlier than the final salt deposits as I spoke of earlier as they go down into the zones of lower and lower flow. Slower and slower flow. The possibility to find fine flood gold in salt bed areas. It's, it's possible. I wouldn't say it's probable, but it is possible. Often where bright spring flowers bloom, there's a weird relationship between the colors of, of wildflowers in the desert and the metal and magnesium and calcium balance. That is, some of the brightest flowers and most unusual type of flowers are very small scrub plants and they bloom only for a period of one or two weeks a year. But when they do, it's brilliant, brilliant, deep purple, reds, blues, you name it. And the thing is, those flowers are telling you a little bit about the soil and the concentrations of soil down below. I suspect, my theory is, that they're actually trying to attract bees for a very short interval, and they've only got a little bit of time to survive that because they're going to die out from the heat. And so they have no option but to produce these flowers, and they typically make use of some of those metals and things like that in the process to make those brilliant colors. So it's just kind of a theory I have. It may be due to the lack of larger plants to block the sun, that allows them to come out and bloom very quickly, uh, but they're also going to disappear very quickly because there's no shade. Maybe also due to those minerals, like I said, and the color chemistry that goes on. It may be an adaptation to a very short lifespan. They're rushed to pollinate by the bees. Also look for swales and dimples. This is a geologic feature that you'll be looking for in the desert, and that is in the sands and the, and the dirts and soils. You might find an area where there's like a dimple and then there's dead vegetation right in the center toward the middle of that dimple. That might tell you that there's an old load that died out down below the dimple. And any gold that was up above for hundreds of feet has now collapsed down into the soils below because of the erosion due to, due to the formation of sulfuric acids from the decay of those pyrites. The gold that was in it would continue to concentrate down into a pile. They call that a pocket placer, and it can be extremely lucrative to find one. 
So you want to keep your eyes open for that kind of thing where there's no vegetation, but there is a bump, there's a dent. Typically when there's a dent, it's going to cup some water and there's going to be growth. But if there's not, then hmm, that looks suspicious. And that's it for desert prospecting. Can vegetation be a clue to gold mineralization? Catch you later. Over and out. Prospector Jess.